So uh, we've come a ways in this project. If you had very little experience in coding, there's still more to learn, of course. But if you had a little bit of experience, we've covered various aspects of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you've had some experience in these coding in this in these languages, hopefully you learned a few new things also regarding HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and the big focus of making an app. There's still a lot to learn about that, of course, but we're at a point where we've created this app that's pretty viable about being able to do things, creating an account, saving data, retrieving it, all that stuff. We started to dabble with some of the concepts of, uh, of the device and that it can take a photo and there's still stuff we can do about GPS and uh, contacts and all of that. So something like this, these these sorts of projects, especially when you're on your own, these could go on forever. You could be adding to it, improving to it, learning something new, adding to it, it never ends. So that's why we have that concept that I mentioned previously of MVP, minimal viable product. And we're at that point, we're at a point where it's the product, our app is minimal enough for us, for it to be viable. People could download it. You know, I still may have to check my spelling or fix colors and stuff like that. But the product is pretty functional up to this point. So that's where we're at. We're at MVP. <coughs> you had some pseudo homework over the weekend, which was to uh, look at a couple of websites. Uh, and one uh, we'll start to do right now, which is uh, getting our app into, um, into release mode. We've been under debug mode this whole time where our app is not encrypted, where we're able to look at it via the web browser to kind of see behind the scenes, to debug it. Well, we need to switch over to release mode. And it's, just, it's not just a matter of switching to release and clicking build. We have to do a few things. That's what you needed to look over at the weekend. And now we will do it together. So if you look on the network folder, remember I put a I put a file there with a link. Let's see, network folder, signing the app. Um, if you haven't done so at home, we'll do this now to get a, a real result. But go ahead and go to your web browser and open up that link that I've got in the network folder. This is an article package your Cordova app for publishing to an app store. So this is the official documentation from Microsoft to use Visual Studio to deploy your app officially for the various app stores. iTunes, Google Play, Windows Store. So you can read the details. I'm not going to read it word for word. I'm going to jump to the parts that matter to us. But hopefully you looked at it over the weekend. How many of you did take a look at it a little bit over the weekend? Good, 10 points for you, minus 10 for everyone else. Sorry. So um, let's see what we need to do here. Uh, for the Android application, it goes on to talk about uh, checking your config XML file. So we'll look at that in a moment, but you want to look through it one more time to see that everything is properly set up as you expected it, like its version number and plugins and all of that, like removing plugins that you're not really using to save space and such. There's a few tips here about uh, writing the code in the XML file to do a few extra things, not necessary for us. It goes on to say, make sure you've done this, you've done that, you've set your version code, minimum API level, etc. We'll do that in a moment. But we've touched on those things before. Then we've got number two, Android, generate a private certificate. When running Android apps using the Android SDK, applications are signed with a debug certificate generated by Visual Studio. Before you can sign Android apps for deployment via other means, such as an app store, you must use a signing certificate for your organization. So this is basically saying you need to create a credential that identifies you as the official developer of this app. So it's going to be a special file that has your details as a developer that we then use to vouch for this app when we send it to the App Store. And this development, this developer certificate is going to be used for any subsequent updates to our app on the App Store or when we make new apps. So writing our notes right here, I have a notepad file where I'm going to write notes. 
I'm going to say, uh, before we can publish our app to the app stores, and I'm going to focus on Android for the moment, of course, uh, we need to uh, build it as a uh, release version of the app, not debug. We've had it under debug this whole time. Okay, well actually, before that, we need a um, developer certificate, aka signing certificate. AKA key store. With um, comparing Apple versus Android in this regard, the general idea is uh, you visit developer.apple.com go through their process, pay their price, $99 a year, go through their system, and then they uh, and then they give you a certificate and you're officially a developer. So you go through them. Visit developer.apple, pay to become a dev, go through their process, and you get the certificate. With Android, you create your own certificate and use it for free. You have to go to apple.com, go through the process, pay for it, you get the certificate, then you start to use it on your app. You're a developer. Android, because it's more open source, you can create it, which we'll do in a moment, and then we'll use it. That's what these instructions are going to tell us right here, how to create our own developer certificate. Purpose of the certificate. You um, affirm that the app in question is yours. You prove to the app stores it's your app. You use it when you upload to publish your app, and you use it when you make updates to your app, and when you upload new apps. So you're going to get this one file that is your credential that shows this is my app. I created it. I'm uploading it to the developers, <coughs> to my developers store. When I then create other apps in the future, I have to keep using that same, uh, that same uh, certificate to show that all of these seven apps come from me, this developer. So that's the big idea with what this is. It's it's required. We're going to create one right now. The instructions. Um, this is going to be done in the Windows command prompt in good old DOS. And we're going to use the Java tool to create this file. So basically following these steps here. Okay, to create the certificate, let's do this. Let's open the command prompt. So go to your start menu and search for command prompt. It already went that way. Uh, well, it's supposed to come this way, actually. Yes. So let's go to the command prompt. Now we have one called command prompt and one called developer command prompt. Uh, just go to the plain old command prompt. And then right here we get a command prompt, a DOS interface. How many of you have ever used this before, typing commands in DOS? OK, good. How many of you have used it within the past year? OK, within the past uh, week. Look at these overachievers over here. OK, good. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to type a few commands without a pretty interface, without an icon to click. We're just going to type these commands to create what we need to do here. This says, to, to confirm 
that this is going to work, you can type here Java C. Go ahead and type Java C, then press Enter. In my case, it says Java C is not recognized. Let's type Java by itself. If you type Java C and it did what it said to me that it's not recognized, that's fine. If you type Java C and you did get some meaningful feedback, that's fine. If you type Java and you got this feedback like me, usage and such, that's fine. If it gave you an error, that's fine. I'm just showing you that what we're going to do is we're going to type some commands here instead of clicking buttons. Therefore, whatever commands that we type here must be typed exactly properly correct or it won't work. This is very unforgiving. If I wanted to copy a file and then I, uh, and then I typed it wrong, it would just give you an error. That's how you spell copy. Error. Game over. So the point of using this tool is you've got to be sure you type all of this exactly correct as the documentation will say. Since we tried typing Java C and it didn't give us the result I wanted, OK, no problem. We have to go to the folder where Java is installed to type this command. Probably our Java is installed on the C drive in the program files folder, in the Java folder, in whatever version of Java we have in the binary folder. So before we try to do this in the command prompt, open up a regular computer window. And according to the documentation, we should find our Java app in the C drive. So let's open up local disk C, C as in cat. Double click local disk C. Then we'll go into program files. Now there's program files in program x86. Open up program files. I see a folder called Java. Double click that one. We've got different versions of, of of this thing here, 180.112 and 180.51 and 171. OK, I'm lost. No, because we've got the documentation. The documentation is having us go to a folder of JDK dot something. If we look in our folder, there's only one folder that has JDK. The others are JRE. So obviously, we go to the folder of JDK. And we've got 180.112. The documentation mentions 111. So obviously, I don't see 111. I'm not going to freak out because we've got 112. So open up JDK 180.112. Now, if yours is different compared to mine, again, don't freak out. As long as you go to JDK, you'll be in the right place. But if it's confusing, of course, raise your hand and we'll figure it out. We'll open that. Next, the documentation says go into the bin folder, binary folder. There's a binary right there. There's a bunch of uh, little pieces of software here, and one of them uh, alphabetically is key tool. Uh, don't double click it, but if you were to have double clicked it, you would see a screen pop up for a moment and it goes away. Well, that's a command that <coughs> needs to be run in DOS in the command prompt. By double clicking it here, it'll run it. Since we didn't provide any input, nothing happens. So we need to get into this folder, but through the command prompt. And that's simply going to use a couple of DOS commands. We saw that when we wanted to open a folder in Windows, you double click the folder, you go into it. Well, in DOS, we're going to need to type a command called cd, which is to change directory. So what we're about to do, you only really need to do it once. And I'm going to put it in the notes here. I'm going to say, uh, you need to create a uh, certificate, a key store file, uh, via command prompt. in the command prompt window you need a few commands 
cd, which is short for change directory, will move you from directory or folder to directory. In my case, because I'm on my instructor's account, mine says I'm on the C drive, in the users folder, in the instructor folder. I need to navigate, I need to CD into the folder that I need to be in. So first of all, um, we can type CD space backslash, press enter. And that'll take us all the way back to the top level, the, the root of the C drive. That's a backslash, not a forward slash. Forward slash obviously leans forward, backslash leans back. DIR directory listing shows you the contents <coughs> of the folder or directory. So now that we're in the C drive right here, type dir, press enter. So nothing happens until you type the command and you press enter. And then that's when you realize you typed it wrong, because then it'll tell you dir is not recognized. You typed it wrong. Well, when you type it correctly, it shows you then a listing here. There are all of these folders and files. There's an exceptions directory. There's a... Um, temp directory, there's a Windows, there's a WordPress directory. Well, we need to go into the program files directory. So we're going to say cd space program files and press enter. It says, okay, you're in the program, direct, program files folder in the C drive. If you DIR to view the directory, you'll see all of the folders there. And where do we need to go next? The Java folder. So CD Java. Capitalization doesn't matter in this case. We want the CD space Java to go into the Java folder. Okay, since I don't see anything until I tell it to show me, I type dir just to see in the folder. Next, I need to go into jdk1, blah, blah, blah. So cd, jdk, now here's a trick. I've typed this much, jdk. If I press tab, it'll type the rest. Tab will auto-complete, especially when you're trying to change directories. Uh, but if you were trying to autocomplete, if you just type J, it doesn't quite know what you mean. JDK, JRE, JRE7. So as long as you type some amount of the file name and then tab, it should type the rest. You can type it manually, of course, but tabbing will uh, save you some effort. Enter. DIR, I see all of this. Where's our next destination? The documentation says where to next. Bin. CD bin. CD space bin. Enter. So now I should be in the right place. In the C drive, in the program files folder, in the Java folder, JDK1812 bin folder. Is everyone there at that point? If you're not there, none of this will work that follows. So everyone is there. Okay, the documentation further says, in the command prompt, execute the following command. Before we try to do this, let me break it down what it's saying here. We're going to run the software key tool. Right, when I showed over here, I've got the software key tool right here. And if I try to run it in Windows, it doesn't work. We're going to run it in the command prompt, key tool, with a few options, a few parameters. We're going to generate a, a key pair. 
We're going to create a key store file, and we're going to save a file somewhere, like on our flash drive, dot key store. It's going to be a file that ends in dot key store. We're going to save it somewhere, like on our flash drive. I'll show you how in a moment. With an alias, let me come back to that in a moment. Key algorithm, how it's encrypted, don't worry. Key size, don't worry. Validity, 10,000 days. Don't worry about that just yet. But we're going to need to type this command here, and we're going to need to type it exactly perfectly. Because if you mistype, if you misspelled right here, you type a J instead of a G, and you type all of the rest, it won't tell you you did it wrong until you press Enter. And then it won't know what you meant there, and you'll have to do it again. But I'm going to try to put this on screen at the same time as I have my command prompt here. And because this is a long command, it's going to wrap to the next line. But from the command prompt, key tool, space, dash, gen, key, pair. I'm going to generate a key file, space, dash, v. V for verbose. It'll give me back a lot of feedback as I do this to kind of prompt me that I'm doing it correctly. Space dash key store. We can create different kinds of things with this key tool. We're specifically saying a key store file, a developer's certificate to use in, with our app. Um, next, a path where the key store file will be saved. In my case, because I plugged in my flash drive, my flash drive is drive F. I don't know what yours is. It probably is F. It might be G or D or something. And you can obviously tell what it is when you open a computer window, and it'll tell you right there. My flash drive is on F. The DVD drive is D. The network folder is Z. So mine's F. Knowing that, I'm going to say F colon backslash. So that's saying we're about to save a file. I'm going to save a file onto my F drive. And I'm going to call it my last name. Now this is going to go over to the next line, and I can't show it all at once. Sorry. I'm going to type my last name dot key store. Question. Yes, when you backspace, you'll be able to delete. But if you want to go back to the beginning, you can use the arrow keys. See here, I'm using the arrow keys. And let's say I misspelled key tool. So you can go back with the arrow keys. You can't click on it with the mouse. You'll have to use the arrow keys. So yes. OK, uh, let me check you one moment. Let me just finish my thought right here. Uh, so on my F drive, colon, backslash, campus, dot, key store, your last name, dot, key store. You're about to create a file with your name, dot, key store. Next. Space dash alias, space, your last name again. I'll put this in the notes in a moment, but we're going to create a key store which is something like this. It's going to be a keychain. This keychain right here has three keys. So this first one about key store is like we're naming the whole keychain. Then I'm creating a specific key to open a specific thing. That's the alias. Like a keychain can have multiple keys to open multiple drawers. Your key store file here can have multiple keys for multiple developers, for multiple apps, etc. We're going to keep it simple in that the name of our key store file will be your last name, and then the key that you're going to use for your app is going to be the same thing, your last name. 
all of these things we're going to type in a moment, we want to make sure we've typed them correctly because it's going to be hard to change these things after the fact. That's the point of it. This should not be an easily editable file. It's a security file. <coughs> it shouldn't be easily changeable. So we want to make sure we do it right the first time. Now, uh, if you didn't do it right the first time, we can do it again. But again, this is like, you know, how many times am I going to go get another copy? Am I going to go to um, Home Depot and make another copy of this key? Um, you know, if I lose the key for the college here, it's a big, uh, it's a big to do because they have to go change the locks on every key in the building. So you don't want to lose these keys. Same thing with the key for your app. You don't, you don't want to lose this file. You want to remember your password, which we'll do in a moment. But this is an important file. Space dash key alg key algorithm. Here it matters. Capital R S A. What algorithm? What encryption method? R S A. Space key size. The number of bytes that the key is. Something like that. Just do it as as is. And space dash validity. Space ten thousand days. You're going to be an app developer for the next 10,000 days, which is like 30 years. Congratulations. So we're going to do that. We're going to execute that command in a moment. So this command, in a moment, when I press Enter, will then ask me a bunch of other things. What's your name as a developer? What's your name as your company? Uh, what state? Zip code? All of that stuff. So it is going to create a file that has your credentials. For the purposes of the class on this next screen, you can make it all up completely if you want. You can set it up for real if you want. It doesn't matter for the, for the grade of the class. So you have two options. When you're creating this file, you can create it for real and then use it in future apps. Or make it all up fake, and then when you want to do this for real someday, do it for real. So you need to create a certificate. The commands are CD, DIR, and key tool. A long command that actually creates the file. Your key store file can have real info or, you know, uh, testing info. 
However, it cannot easily be changed after the fact. So if I uh, fill in the, the things it's going to ask me in a moment, if I fill it in all fake, and then later I decide, OK, I want to use this file for real in the future, I need to go back and put my real name and put my real zip code and such, it's not going to be very easy to change that. And the purpose of that is, is exactly like, you know, forging keys. Uh, some keys are stamped with do not duplicate, right? So the same thing with these key store files, they're going to be hard to change after the fact. So I'm going to press Enter. Hopefully I typed everything correctly. Looking at my code right here one more time. Key tool, gen, key pair, v, key store, f, colon, campos, alias campos, dash, key, a, l, g, r, s, a. OK, I guess it's good. Enter. OK, so now it's going to ask me to create a password to be able to access the file. It's going to ask us for two passwords, one to access the file and one to access the key in the file. And it can be the same thing. For convenience, it can be the same thing. For heightened security, it should be different things. I'm going to say, for convenience, same thing. So you won't be able to see what you're typing here. So don't be alarmed if you don't see anything happening. You won't be able to see what you're typing. So hopefully, you, you typed what you thought you typed correctly. And I'm going to write it down, too, because I'm going to forget. I'm going to press Enter, and then I'm going to retype it. I cannot see what I'm typing. I just have to uh, pray that I did learn what I needed to learn in my typing class. Uh, and so, OK, uh, I type my password in to be able to access the key file. I confirmed it twice. If it didn't match, it'll tell you to do it again. Next, it'll ask for a bunch of things here. What is your first and last name? And again here, you can, you can make this up if you want or do it for real um, and you know put it really for uh, usage or not. But I'll put it real, sure. What is the name of your organizational unit? That's a really fancy way of saying, what is your job title? You can put here developer, app developer, programmer, CEO, whatever you want to do, because this is your certificate for your organization. I will do here developer. You can type nothing if you want. That'll be fine. What is the name of your organization? So here's the part. Uh, you don't have to do anything very special. You don't have to get a business license. You don't have to register with California. You don't have to do any of that to be a business or anything like that where we're at here. You are a developer. You are a company, business, whatever, uh, if you choose to be here. Uh, so. I'm going to say I'm making a company called Victor Apps. You can call this whatever you want. Uh, funny, clever, straightforward, anything you want, the name of your business. But again, this will not be easy to change after we're done. You can create as many key stores as you want. So right now you can make it up fake, and then later on make another one for real. City or locality. I want to say I'm in San Diego. State, California. Just type CA if you want. What is the two letter country code for this unit? US. If you are developing in other countries, you need to look up the two country code CA, I suppose, Canada, MX, Mexico, JP, Japan, UK, the UK. So, US. Then there will be a spot to confirm here. Is all of this correct? If you press Enter, it will assume you meant no, and it'll have you fill it all in again. If I don't want it to assume no, what do you think I should do? Type yes. If what you type looks correct, type yes, and then press Enter. Okay, so it generated 2048 bits, etc. Okay, now enter key password for Campos. Up above, I executed the command 
create a key store file with a key or alias of campos. So like I said, to keep it simple, the whole file will be your last name dot key store. And then the one key inside of it will be also your last name. So now it wants a password for the key itself. And I'm going to use the same one as before, although it is more secure to have a different one. If it worked all properly, you typed everything correctly, it should then say storing onto your F drive your file.keystore. And it'll just take you back to the command prompt. You can confirm on your flash drive. In my case, there it is. Campos.keystore. Did that work for you? Anyone need some help? Did you go astray, maybe? Remember, I'm getting this all out of the documentation, but anyone need any help on that? All right, so step one, command prompt. Step two, we navigate to the Java folder. Step three, we type the command, etc., etc. Step four, we need to then change our app and tell it to use this file so that when we build our app, it sees our credentials and our app is then a real app that the app stores will accept. If we don't do this next part, the app store will reject our app because it's still in debug mode. After generating the key store file, we add it to our Visual Studio project and then build our app in release mode. Adding it, I don't mean dropping it into the folder there, I mean adding it in the way that the instructions tell us. So the instructions. Now that you have a key store, a signing certificate, you must configure your project to use them. In Solution Explorer, expand the project folder, double click on build.json file, and we're going to edit it. We're going to edit it as such. So Visual Studio, we have a build.json file in the root level of the project, not in the WW folder but outside in the same level as config XML. When you open that up, it says here, um, when, we, uh, when we work with creating an Android app ready for release, we need to provide these things here. The key store is the path to your file. Now, in my case, my key store, I put it right on the root level of my drive. You can put it anywhere you want. You can put it in your subfolders and all of that. But you're going to need to write a path in this file here that points to the file if you moved it to some other folder. I'm keeping it very simple by having it on the root drive, on the root on the root of the drive. And notice I have double backslash. Um, that's very important because this JSON file is in JSON format. And when you want, you want to use slashes or backslashes, they have to have the escape character. So in order for this to find your file on your F drive, it's F colon double backslash the name of your file, .keystore. Here, then, you can type in the name of your password. Now, I'm not going to type my real password because you will see it here. But if you don't type a password, that's fine, too, because what will happen is when we run this eventually, it will pop up to ask you for the password. 
So it's a little more secure to not put your password here. Because what if someone gets a copy of your file here, your project? They can easily look in this JSON file and see that you've used that password, and then they'll have your password. So for convenience, you can put your password here. It won't ask you for the password when we actually build. But for security, I would recommend don't put the password. It'll pop up and ask you. Alias, which is the same name as your file, which I said when we created the file, then for the alias we use the same last name. I also won't put the password to my key file in there. And on your key store, you don't need to do anything on that. Uh, yep, nothing there. Okay, so I'm going to save changes to my build file and close it. We changed two and very important things, of course, the path to the file and what alias. So save it and close it. Okay, next, create the, de the deployment package. The final step involves creating a release version. In the standard toolbar, choose Android, which we already have, choose the release build configuration. All of this time we've been in debug. Let's switch that to release. We're in release mode for Android for devices. Here says Android release device. In the build menu, select build solution. In the build menu, select build solution. Before you do that, of course, confirm that you had release Android device. Build solution. This will be very similar to what we've done before, but then what will be different is you should get a pop-up eventually that asks you for your password if you didn't put your password into the, the raw plain text of the JSON file. So that'll take a moment for me because I haven't done this build yet today. But if you get any error, of course, uh, call me over. Let's figure it out. But just wait a moment, that'll then build, and we'll have the file. Question? Um, so, do we have to move the key, or every time you want to upload an app? No, we only create the key one time, and then we will use the key every time for multiple projects. And do we have to do that key? Let's say if I were building an app uh, in the Android Studio, do I still need to create that key? If you're using Android Studio, there will be a process. You can create a you can create the key in Android Studio a little easier actually than in the command prompt. Uh, so from somewhere, either Android Studio or the command prompt, you need to create the key. Then you use the key in the software. So in my case, I'm getting the pop-up right there. Enter the password. That's good. And then I asked it again because that's the one for the alias. The first time it asks me is to unlock the file. The second time it asks me is to use the key. Yeah. Um, if we're doing this on our own computer, the requirement to make the key store the alias, is that just have Java installed? Yes, and you should, uh, I believe you should have Java already installed when you install Visual Studio. When you install Visual Studio, there's a bunch of check marks that it asks you for. And if you had uh, installed it the way I had it in my handout, one of the check marks is for Java. So you should have Java already if you've got Visual Studio. If you don't have Visual Studio, you can get Java for free from java.com, and then you'll have it. OK, so mine is still thinking. It's still building. While it's doing that, let me mention further in the documentation 
when the build completes look for your APK file you'll find it into your projects bin Android release folder and we'll see that in a moment but eventually when this builds you know when you have a regular app on Windows it's a .exe file it's an executable for Android files it's a .apk file when mine finishes building we'll, we'll go check it out So mine's still thinking. Let me look at the documentation a little bit more. Notice there's also a section on how to do this for iOS. Uh, so if you're interested in how to publish your app for iPhones, iPads, and such, you can read that on your own. Um, there is a lot of setup in that it needs Xcode, which is software and all of that, but the instructions are there. And then if you wanted to uh, compile or convert your app for Windows, there's a little spot there too, what you need to do for for Windows. So our app that we've created here in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript could be converted into all of the all of the platforms. Um, the documentation is there. We're focusing on Android because we've got Windows computers, we've got the software set up. If you wanted to target these other platforms, um, there's the instructions. There's also a lot of other documentation on the left side here that might be useful to you. Uh, building or deploying, getting started. There's instructions there on setting yourself up for your app to run or be tested on iOS as well. So I'll write some notes here. I'm still waiting on mine. Uh, after so after successful build. You'll have a cbdb.apk file. 
This is the file you'll upload to Google Play. Actually, you're going to have more than one version of it. A, a compressed, encrypted version and an uncompressed version. We're going to want to use the compressed version, and we'll see that in a moment. The file is found in your projects folder in bin Android release. Okay, so mine finished finally. After all of that, seven minutes, five seconds. And at the very end, it, should, it says over here, if you never notice the very end of the output, built the following APK, in my case, in the F drive, in 0814, Campo CBDB, platforms, Android, build, outputs, APK, Android release APK. So it created a final APK file ready for release. Let's go check that out. If you want to minimize everything, go to your flash drive. We're going to go to the um, we're going to go to the folder in your project inside of the inside of the the project folder. You'll have your solution file and then the name of your project. So inside of that. We've got bin inside of the project folder. We've got bin Android release. And there's multiple APKs here. A couple of debug versions, a couple of release versions. Android dash release is the final file. The one that's unaligned, we don't want that one because that one is uncompressed. Someone could, in theory, open up the file and look at your code. This one of Android release, that's the final version. So you can move it or copy it to a, a more handier place, like let's say I'm going to uh, move it into the root of my flash drive. Android release APK. Uh, it would be better to also kind of name this something like um, Campo CBDB release. You don't have to change the name of the file, but I would recommend to put your last name on it, dash the name of your project, dash release, just to show that this is the, the final release ready version of my project. The big idea is developer certificate release ready version upload to your account to publish and then get rich. Well, we've done these parts here. We've created the certificate, we've created the release ready, we're gonna do the upload to your account. We're gonna take our first break right here because this is the part where the second 
uh, homework over the weekend was you needed to go over to developer.amazon.com and create an account. If you didn't do that over the weekend, take a moment to do it over the break because I'm not going to go through the steps of creating it. When we come back after the break, we're going to log into our account and we're going to see how to use it. I'm not going to spend time to show you how to create it because it asks you for first name, last name, zip code, phone number, that sort of thing. You can do that on your own. You should have done it over the weekend. If not, do it, do it during the break right now at 6.35. We'll take a break until 6.45. When we come back, we will log in. And if you're having any trouble here, call me over.